Please join us as we discuss going to time of overtime. Carrie Wallen, best of the best. My goodness. Uh, you want to meet some people that are welcoming, loving, hospitable, generous. It's the Wallens. And we had an amazing time in Arizona with you for four weeks. You're looking. I'm looking uh, awfully tan. Awfully tan. Yes. My mic's I not look right. Middle Eastern again. I have <laughs> gained some <laughs> shade of brown. And uh, it's been amazing. Well, thank you for uh, hosting us, having us there in Arizona, and, and, and for the good work you guys do. You guys are faithful in the way that you're witnessing in Tempe, Arizona. Praise God. Yes, praise, praise God, God indeed. It's a privilege. It's a privilege it's a indeed. Privilege. Yeah. Um, well, thank you, Pastor today for the message. So good. Again, during overtime, what we want to do is we want to continue to reflect, ruminate, and digest the message. So when we go from here, if Pastor Dave came up to you and said, what was the message about? <laughs> You'd be like, I know, because we talked about it again after the message. Actually, I was thinking as he was talking a question that I wanted to ask you. Mm. Um, you know, he was saying like uh, how, you know, uh, essentially don't, it's not always necessarily going to go great when you share your story. Yes. Has it ever happened to you that you've shared your testimony with someone and you've, like, yes. they've rejected you or yes. dismissed you? <laughs> yes. What was that like for you? It was you fun. It was like, woo. Fun. Uh, <laughs> I did like this the apostles. This is what we like to do for entertainment on the weekends. Yeah. Go out and get rejected. <laughs> it's great. You read for the apostles, they were beaten up. They went around singing afterwards. They're like, woo. We have been counted worthy to suffer for Christ. That's right. um, but again, that obviously, um, I think it's, it's not all the time that you're going to feel like that. But I do think there's times where you will share and you'll get pushed back or you'll be ridiculed and right. it kind of hurts. You're like, oh, okay, I, I wanted to share this faith with you because I truly believe that it's the only way that you can be reconciled with mm -hmm. God and I was shunned or I was pushed away. Yeah. And I've experienced that before. Uh, actually, I had people, when I used to work at Union Gospel Mission and we would do services there, uh, you know, I would be sharing the message and people were like, come on, man, hurry up, I'm hungry. <laughs> and it was like, it's been two minutes, guys, I just started. And, uh, or you'd have people come up to me a couple times, they're like, wow, I can't believe you converted from Islam to Christianity. How dare you? I'm like, wow. I'm sorry, what? Uh, and th these would be like Caucasian guys. <laughs> be like, all right. Well. <laughs> okay. And I'll just move on. And I'll just uh, move on with doing what I'm doing, even with the pushback. And that's what I see in the life of Paul. Yeah. That even time after time, being stoned, being left with dead, beaten up, yeah. uh, accused of things that weren't true. Mm -hmm. He kept going because he kept his eyes on Jesus. Yeah, you're in good company if you face any persecution or like here, dismissal even, people mm -hmm. not caring. Um, I think it's funny because so often we don't know the context in someone else's life. So when we're sharing our testimony, you know, there's a verse in Jeremiah when God calls Jeremiah and he tells him, something so interesting. He's saying, you know, I'm going to call you to the nations. You're going you're gonna to speak. And he says, do not consider their faces or I'll make you look foolish. Mm -hmm. And I think about that when I'm sharing my story with people sometimes because I don't know what's going on in the rest of their life or how God is going to bring this time when I'm sowing this seed mm -hmm. to fruition later. Yeah. I know in my own life, um, there were people that were so loving toward me and shared, and I completely rejected them. But at the time when the full picture kind of came to culmination in my life, oh, I was so grateful for them. And their stories actually added power and weight to the stories of the people that were there when I came to Christ. That's it. So we don't always know. You know, Paul said, I sowed seed and I planted, Apollos watered, but it's yeah. God that makes it grow. So we're like so little true. farmers sprinkling that's seed. It. And that's exactly what happened in my own life because my mom first came to Colsa Church and she got saved here. And then she came home to my sister and I, she shared the gospel with us for the first time. Again. What was your reaction? I was like, what? <laughs> Just say, ah. And we were like, what? We didn't really fully understand. She was talking about this, this relationship, this love, mm -hmm. loving relationship that she has with Jesus, a person. That, and we're like, what? This is so weird. And so we 
kind of listened and kind of made fun of her a little bit. Oh. And then we moved on. Ouch. We're like, well, that's good for you, mom. Yeah. So that's exactly what happened. So she started planting those seeds. And then slowly, t about two years went by, and we started showing up as well at church and where we came to put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And so, as you said, you never know. The person's reaction in that moment might be like, that's stupid. Yeah. Like Paul. He heard the gospel. He's yeah. like, let's kill them. Yeah. Let's kill all the Christians. <laughs> that was his response to the gospel. Yeah. It's like, let's kill them. And then later on, he, he becomes the number one advocate and ambassador for yeah. Christ. So you never know. You don't. And so we have to be, I think, faithful in doing what God has called us to do. And I think some of the points that Pastor Dave mentioned, again, amazing. We must be a witness. Our life needs to match our words. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's one of the things that have you, how have you found that in your own life? What's the best way to do that? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, years ago, uh, I was really involved in the church, uh, newly married, and then I started having kids, and it was like I suddenly got, like, was retreated behind three little babies and hidden, you know, and I felt a bit um, like, how is ever, anyone going to be impacted by my life? I'm buried under babies and. Mm -hmm. I, never out and my hair's messy and I'm so tired. Um, but God really showed me that actually a healthy marriage preaches the gospel. Mm. A healthy family unit preaches the gospel. When we're out operating in the world and we smile at our children because it's naturally a part of our dynamic in our home. When we like look at our spouse and we don't have angry eyes because God has helped us to grow our marriage. You know those sorts of things. Yeah. That preaches the gospel. It's like the, the thing that whets someone's appetite to know more. I was thinking, you know, uh, that a tree bears fruit of its kind, right? Mm -hmm. If I were to, I live in the desert, so we have lots of cactuses, cactuses. They're called cacti, actually. Cacti, yeah. Yeah, cacti. And you would never, if I were to take some mandarin oranges and like stick them on a cactus and then offer them to you to eat them, you would never want them because the cactus didn't grow those oranges and now they're disgusting. Mm. You, you want to be the fruit the tree that bears the fruit of its kind. So we may not necessarily have, be all bearing the same amount of fruit, but we want to be growing up in that. And mm -hmm. so we don't have to be perfect, but we should be, you know, we should have some little flower buds that yeah. we should have something that's resembling fruit growing on our tree. That's it. Not just pretending, you know, coming to church is not just a box we check. It's a part of a healthy life that's good. that we lead. And I think we, when we're open and honest and transparent with our difficulties, struggles, mm -hmm. people are like, oh, okay, this person is not putting on a facade. Yeah. They're not pretending to be all good. They recognize the reality of struggle of life. Yeah. And at the same time, they're putting their trust in the one who's above it all. He's the, he's the king of the universe. They trust him as yeah. the supreme leader of all things. Sometimes when people think we have a perfect life, they think that's why we are connected to God. So it is also good that people see we're human. I mean, mm -hmm. but, but, but there's that fruit. Yeah. There's the evidence of our faith yeah. where we are seeing change and transformation. So, um, and then, so we got to be prepared to share the hope that we have in us. Again, first Peter three fifteen sixteen, 16, as was mentioned in the message. So I hope this week you're prepared and you prayed for it. Uh, I'm going to pray that you will receive that kind of opportunity. Yeah. So it's too late. So you, <laughs> It's coming for folks, you. Folks, it's coming your way. Okay? Your pastor prayed that you have an opportunity. <laughs> it's coming your way. You're like, no, why was I here? No, you're going to have a, you, I think you're going to have great opportunities this week where God is going to put people in your path or people are going to come to your mind. You're like, suddenly you think about someone. You're like, why am I thinking about that, that person? You pray for them. Yeah. And then possibly even reach out to them. Yeah. And so that's what we want to do this week. Be prepared to give, the, give a reason for the hope that's in you. And uh, thank you, Carrie. You're, you're the best. Thank Appreciate you. you and Patrick for all the good work you do in Arizona. Thank you for being with us online. We love you. We'll see you next week. And God bless you.